Cyber Computing 2011 is the 24th conference of its kind devoted to high performance computing, networking, storage, and analysis. The number of people at this year's show has exceeded the 10,500 who made it to this show in New Orleans last year. The budget has been some $6 million and the show itself is expected to have generated $23 million for the local economy. The 266,000 square feet of exhibit space here is being filled by 366 exhibitors from both the industry and academia. But to really understand the scale of this conference, or should we say exascale, it's best to hear from the exhibitors themselves. Everyone has, for the last several months, stacked up all of their new announcements for uh, breakthroughs in hardware and in software and the announcements of new machines. It all happens here, as well as a technical program where results from scientists who are working on papers and the latest uh, algorithms present their technical results. So it's both you know, a showcase for all the latest technology and software and new results in the science field. It's a preview of where the industry is going to be going three to four years down the road because these big systems that uh, everyone is building, well, today they may be exotic and only be in government labs. Sooner or later they will trickle down into the hands of corporations and eventually into the hands of end users. You know, it used to be that a teraflop was uh, beyond imagining for, uh, for a consumer and now you can get that you know, in, a, in a standard system. We're in a transition period for supercomputing. Uh, we've gone from a more general purpose computing that we've seen for the last few years and people are experimenting with new technologies, new types of computing. And so you see from companies like Cray and others, uh, GPUs, you see very high multi-core products, and then you see the software that people are developing to try and take, make the most of those new technologies. Well, the, the community that's coming together here spans literally every field of science and engineering and scholarly research. Our hope is that all those communities come here, learn about the opportunities to enhance their own fields of science and engineering. It's hard to predict where the next breakthrough will be, but we hope that uh, the people coming uh, will use these technologies, use these new capabilities, and, and really push the envelope and in the long run benefit society. Because I've, I've spent my career, like uh, most people on HPC, um, watching computers get faster and faster. And my specialty has been so the software and hardware to make it faster. So when I walk around the show floor, I'm just fascinated to see the problems people are trying to solve. Um, th this is not a crowd that wonders what a quad core is good for. You know, can I get enough work for it? They, they describe tens of thousands of cores, if not more, and the problems that they can't solve with that many cores. So weather modeling and, and uh, drug research and disease research, there's, it's an endless supply at this show of that. Yeah, I, uh, I, I, had a I have a friend who had cancer and, and luckily sh uh, she's in remission. Personally, uh, I would love if we could detect cancer much earlier and have much more effective therapies for it. I'll give you a, uh, you know, a story that really resonated with me is uh, at UC San Diego, there's a, a group of researchers who have figured out a way to improve uh, radiotherapy for cancer patients. And essentially what happens is when they are dealing with a, a tumor and they're uh, pro doing radiation on it, the tumor can break up or can reduce in size or move. And, and to be able to accurately give the right radiotherapy every day, they have to take a CT scan. But the CT scan, uh, compute after taking the scan takes four, several hours. So they actually practically can't do it every day. They would like to do it every day, but they can't. With GPUs, they've been able to accelerate the CT scan uh, processing so that now they can do a CT scan and in a few minutes later, figure out the right uh, radiotherapy for the day. We do a lot of work in high-end medical imaging, and there's some, some, some new medical imaging technologies that, uh, well, one really interesting one I saw is, uh, and I don't remember the name of it, but they had these lasers that they could shine on uh, liquids, and they could detect pathogens in the liquid with some high-end image resolution. Now, this isn't really HPC, but it, but it, it would use like the processing you know, level of like this chip, and they could go out and with these, uh, you know, like UN workers could go out and find, you know, is the water safe for people or not to drink? I mean, it was a really interesting application, and it's, and it's really being enabled by, I think, pushing the performance you know, in any factor, DSP or other. But those kinds of uh, applications get me really interested in, in what we're doing. How would you like to see something more important than uh, maybe a cure for cancer or a new drug for Alzheimer's? Uh, how could you think of something more important 
than being able to predict natural disasters well before they happen with the accuracy that prevents all deaths and material damage. Um, how would you like to understand basic materials properties to answer some of the basic questions about why we are here, how we got here, where we're going? From solving problems of big data to climate change to speeding up research into cures for cancer, SC11 clearly offers its own brand of super solutions. This is Sylvie Barak for EE Times, reporting from Supercomputing 11 in Seattle.